Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this video is using the definition of the first derivative to actually find the derivative of this particular problem right here, okay? So we have an equation, y equals 1 over x, and what we want to do is find dy dx, and that's notation for the first derivative. Now, um, you can also um, see the first derivative as find y prime, it means the same thing. And if this is in function notation, it would be f of uh, prime of x. Okay, so oh, they all mean uh, the same thing. So if you're given a problem in uh, like this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use the definition of the first derivative to actually find the first derivative. Now, before we get going here, it's important that, um, you know, when you're doing these type of problems, if you're at this point in calculus, that you understand where the definition of the first derivative is coming from. Okay, that's really important. That's like, you know, like fundamental to your understanding of calculus. So it has to do with the slope um, of a function, et cetera. I'm not gonna go into it in this video. I'll, I'll probably do another video on it. But once you understand uh, where this formula, you know, is coming from, then you can really, I think, uh, you know, appreciate, you know, the essence of calculus, okay? but. Let's get going with this particular formula here. So it says, for any function to find the first derivative of that particular function, you have to take the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And then once we do all the algebra here, then we have to take the limit as h goes to zero. And what's left over, if there is a first derivative, will be the answer. Okay, so I kind of wrote out some of this work in advance just so we could focus on the process. So here is our problem, um, y equals 1 over x, okay? So I want to find the first derivative of that. So I like to kind of look at things. Being that the definition of the first derivative is written as a, a function, f of x, we can just write this, y equals 1 over x, as f of x equals 1 over x. So recall from algebra that y is equal to f of x, okay? So this is an equation, and this is a function, okay? So... Now, if you look at the parts of the, the formula, the definition of the first derivative, what we need to find out is we need to get this part, f of x plus h, and we need f of x. So you want to focus on this first, okay? Then we'll kind of plug all that in into the equation. So f of x of uh, this particular function is pretty simple, right? If I plug in x here, it's already written out. It's 1 over x. So that's this part right here. So f of x is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so that's what I got right there. Now, f of x plus h is, well, if I plugged in x plus h into this function, I would get a 1 over x plus h. So that would be this part of which we're going to all be plugging into this uh, formula here in a second. So that's basically the first part of using a definition. Make sure you get um, f of x, which is always gonna be very simple, it's gonna be the function, but a lot of students um, get hung up on f of x plus h. So in this particular example, it's really easy, but you may have to do some more algebra just to evaluate this function here, okay? So now let's continue on. Okay, we, all, we have kind of all the components to this uh, formula. And I'll explain this all in a second. So what we wanna do now, is plug in what we found out for f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that's what I did here, okay? So remember, for f of x plus h, I got one over uh, x plus h, and you want to keep these things in parentheses for sure, um, or you can make an algebraic mistake, minus f of x, which is one over x all over h, okay? So once you're at this point, I always really advise you to, you know, double check your work because, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of algebra. You want to uh, make sure that you got everything set up correctly before you kind of commit to this point forward. Okay, so double check and say, okay, this is correct. F of X plus H is this minus F of X all over H. Now we'll take the limit. That's the very last step. So don't worry about that so much. What we have to do first is clean this part up algebraically as much as we can then we'll take the limit. Okay, so uh, more often than not, what you're gonna end up here in the numerator, we have f of x plus h minus f of x. Well, I shouldn't say more often than not, but frequently, you'll end up with like a complex fraction. So in other words, I have 
a fraction over a fraction. Now, I already have the work written here, okay, the results of doing this algebra. Okay, so in other words, you have to go figure this out, all right, and then the answer is going to be right here. So I already wrote the answer, okay, to that step, but let me show you what I did, okay? So this is, uh, this is where if you're in calculus, and obviously you would be in calculus, maybe pre-calculus at this level, but you have to have strong algebra skills in order to kind of, you know, and this is what I would classify as a really easy problem. So you got to really take your time and just be super careful with your algebra. So what we have to do, okay, is figure out this, this, this part right here, right? Now I wrote the answer, but down here is what we have to figure out. We have to figure out what well, one over X plus H minus one over X. So here, I'll go ahead and explain this algebra quickly. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. There's a shortcut way. You can kind of go this times this um, minus this times this. You'll see that in the numerator, right? So I have x times 1. That's x. And then I have x plus h times this one, and I have the subtraction operation. This is just kind of a shortcut way. You can find out what the LCD is, etc. So if you've been doing this for a long enough time, this probably won't surprise you. So, it's, so I'm going this times this, this times this, okay? And then I have the subtraction operator. That's my numerator. And then I go this way, okay, I find this product, and that's my denominator. Okay, so this is what I have here. Now, this is an absolute great little shortcut to use in algebra. The only thing with this shortcut, and I kind of refer to it as a bow tie method, um, is uh, sometimes you can you can create a fraction that is it's not working with the lowest common denominator. But that's okay, okay? This is kind of a quick way of, of doing things. Now, technically, you can go find the LCD if you want to do it that way. That's fine, too, okay? So anyway, so we're at this point here, okay? And this is work, right? We have to really focus on getting that numerator before we can kind of continue on. So then I could go ahead and just distribute this negative sign. So I have x minus x, right? So I'm distributing this negative sign here, uh, minus h all over x of x plus h, okay? So I'm just kind of working this along, and then I'm going to uh, simplify that numerator so the x's cross cancel, I'm left with minus h all over x times x plus h, okay? So now you can kind of see this is the result, and this is where I have it right here, okay? So that's my numerator all simplified. Now, Remember, that's the numerator, but it's all over H. Can't forget this, okay? So at this point, all right, we want to go ahead and start simplifying. So I have a complex fraction. This is the numerator, right, divided by the denominator, okay? So all of this, this fraction here, this numerator, okay, you can see it right here, is being divided by the denominator H, okay? So see how I wrote that? So let's go ahead and kind of scroll down here. So here, um, of course, you know how to work with fractions. When we're doing division, I go ahead and just multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be negative h over x plus times, um, negative h over x times x plus h times 1 over h, right? So here you can see that the h's will cross cancel. I'm left with this nice guy right here, All right? Negative 1 over x times x plus h in parentheses. So at this point, it looks as uh, as we're about as simplified as we can get. There's no need to um, distribute this x. In other words, to go like x squared plus x times h. Um, you know, that's not going to really get us anywhere because we want to really focus on getting the limit. Okay, so this is a really good point to leave it at. So now let's see where we're at with um, the definition, right? So f prime is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, let me just kind of scroll up here, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But when we simplify this out, right, we were left with this. This is the same thing, okay? So now we have to take the limit. Again, uh, you know, limits is kind of a prerequisite bef um, before you kind of, you know, start doing the these uh, uh, first derivative problems. So you should know, well, to find the limit of this function as h goes to zero, in this case, we just all we need to do is go to replace the h with a zero and then see um, what the results are, right? So we're going to plug a zero in for the h, and that's what I did right here. 
So that's going to leave us with negative 1 over x times x plus 0, which is just going to be x squared. So negative 1 over x squared is, in fact, dy dx, which, again, is the first derivative of that function. Okay, you can see it as y prime, or you can see it uh, with this notation as well. Okay, so again, this type of problem right here, I would definitely say is a pretty much like an introductory type of problem. And um, I really think the focus is, um, one, making sure you understand where uh, the definition comes from, right? From the slope of a function, et cetera, okay? This is really is the beauty of, of calculus as well. So if you don't understand where the mechanics of where this is coming from, you need to go back and do that. Uh, the second point that I would leave you is with, if you're not getting these problems right, it's likely you're making, it's likely your algebraic skills, okay? You're making some sort of algebra mistake. Um, the other reason, I'd say maybe the less common reason, um, but certainly happens with a lot of students, is that you don't know how to take the limit correctly, okay? So that's a little bit easier problem to fix than your algebra skills. So you have to have strong algebra skills, um, you know, to do well with these problems. But I'll leave you with this last thought, okay? In calculus, once you appreciate uh, the definition of finding the first derivative of function, you're going to be like, wow, okay, that's that's awesome, then you're going to learn a bunch of rules, shortcuts, right? We're not going to do this for functions in the future. <laughs> but it's definitely important for you to understand, um, again, you know, you know, the meaning of the first derivative. So anyways, hopefully um, this video is helping out. I'm going to do a ton more videos like this. I already have a lot of stuff on my channel. So please subscribe and maybe like and give me some feedback on um, how things are going with you and math etc. And uh, I will uh, commit to doing a lot more of these problems. Um, just very briefly, my background is uh, I'm a math teacher, I have a degree in mathematics, doing a lot of stuff for many, many years. But what I enjoy the most is trying to, um, you know, explain the complicated and make it, you know, uh, more clear and understandable. So hopefully this video helps you out. But thanks for watching.